I'm not looking for the people who aren't looking to move here or aren't looking to sell a home in this area. The mm -hmm. only people I'm looking for are those looking to buy or sell in, in Vancouver or the greater Vancouver area. Um, and by watching my videos, when they reach out to me, I know that they're one of those people. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Design of Future podcast. I've got a bit of a different guest on today, Craig. Just go ahead and introduce yourself straight off the bat for me. Hey, Ollie, thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm Craig Veroni with Remax Masters Realty. Uh, I'm a real estate agent here in Vancouver, BC. Uh, I live in North Vancouver and my office is in West Vancouver. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, like I said before we hit record, firstly, thank you so much for coming on. Very, very interesting story. Um, for the, for the guys watching and listening that really can't comprehend how real estate and YouTube go together, if you could just quickly sum up what you've managed to achieve and what is sort of under the radar for a lot of people that, say, for example, they're in real estate, but have never, ever considered creating a YouTube channel around it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, maybe about 18 months ago, um, at an amazing conference called Rehumanize in Denver, Colorado that, that was put on by BombBomb Bomb, that I met a woman named Karen Carr and a phenomenal lady out of Savannah, Georgia. And she had built a YouTube empire where she was getting 75% of her business from YouTube. And when I found that out, I, I was blown away. Uh, and I thought, yeah, exactly. My mind was blown. <clears throat> and I immediately said, that is exactly the kind of business that I want to build. I, I want, uh, you know, a lead generating machine online that's simply bringing the people to me that I don't have to go out and look for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, after that, after that conference, I came back, I knew nothing, you know, well, I, I had a YouTube channel, but it was really just to kind of put my videos, a place to put my videos sure. before I oh, embedded yeah. them on my website or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't know how to use YouTube as, as a tool. Um, and it, it was a pretty steep learning curve, let me tell you. Because uh, it's, you know, every platform has their own uh, quirks and, and, and things that you need to know about how to utilize the platform properly. So pretty steep learning curve. Karen was amazing. I, I, you know, I would call her up every now and then and, and just pick her brain and, and ask her some questions. And she was always very generous. Uh, and then, of course, she has um, a Facebook page called YouTube for Real Estate Agents. And that's another great place to share information and, and get information from people. Um, so I made a commitment to myself to post one video a week. Uh, I didn't realize at the time what, what that commitment really meant. Uh, it is a lot. I mean, one video a week sounds easy. It sounds, you know, it's like one video a week, um, but it's a lot. And uh, I knew that this was a long-term play. Video is always a long-term play in real estate. It's, it's not like, you know, you put out a couple of videos and immediately you're going to get business from it. This is a, it's a long-term play and it, it's um, designed to build no like and trust, get you out in front of people who normally probably wouldn't be able to see you. So um, I didn't have any, expect, any expectations right out of the gate, um, but within four months, I got my first you know, YouTube lead. So it, it didn't really take that, that long to start getting some traction. Um, in the first six months, I, I think I had 48 subscribers when I started. And uh, at the end of that year, I started in June. At the end of that year, I had 500 subscribers. And I thought that was, you know, incredible. I, I was blown away that I had achieved uh, and hit 500 subscribers. Mm -hmm. But in the following year, uh, I almost 10 x my subscriber base. So from January of 2020 to January of 2021, I went from 500 subscribers to basically 4,500 subscribers. Amazing. Um, 
And, and that was simply just uh, being consistent, you know, putting out one video a week, putting out the best quality content that I could, you know, um, I knew nothing about editing when I, when I sort of started the video a couple of years ago and uh, I'm still a novice, you know, I'm still learning. Uh, I try and push myself all the time with each video, but um, I try to really put out the best quality content that I can for my viewers. And that, that seems to be, be working. Amazing, man. Amazing. And just while we're on that as well, like what was sort of like the process, like you said, you're, you're a novice when it comes to editing. Have you, have you sort of like, cause I know like with me, I sort of like fell in love with the process of just creating the content as well. So is it like fun for you now as well? It's sort of, it's sort of like a, an added bonus that you get these leads come through from these videos as well, right? Well, the, the, the leads uh, are fantastic. I, I tell you, um, I mean, over the last year, the, you know, the amount, I can't even count anymore the amount of leads that have come through. Um, I get at least one lead a day, right. at least. So, um, you know, it's usually multiple leads a day, but um, the, and these are, you know, qualified warm leads uh, to hot leads of people who've seen my videos or binged watched my videos and are now, you know, they're moving to Vancouver and they want an agent to, to help them purchase a home here. Mm, exactly. And um, Craig, what, what's one of the biggest lessons you've learned from growing the YouTube channel? Obviously that's, that's pretty rapid growth. And I think with, I think with anything, especially, especially real estate agents when they're leveraging YouTube, but pretty much any service based business, you don't necessarily need a ton of subscribers. So even when you had the 500 subscribers, even if one of them was to go through and, and buy a house for you, for you, for yourself, then you'd probably look at that like that was worth it. Right. So what have you learned over that process from going from that low subscriber count to where you are now? That's a fantastic question. Give me one second here. M my nose is uh, running a little bit. No worries. No worries. Take them. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's an excellent question. Um, it's really easy to get hung up on certain metrics on YouTube, like how many subscribers I have, uh, or the big one, how many views has my video gotten? Yeah. You know, uh, we all get sucked into to that metric of, of this video isn't performing very well. Why, why aren't people watching this? Um, I still, you know, I still get sucked into that. Um, and it, it's really hard, but you have to try to let go of, you know, what you think uh, is going to perform well or not. Um, quite often you don't know. Uh, you know, there, when I first started out in the first six months, um, toward the end of that six month period at about month three or four, I started doing a market update video once a month that I hadn't done. I used to do them, you know, uh, previously, and I, I had stopped doing them for a while. I started doing that again, and I noticed those videos were getting two to four times the views of any of my other videos, which really frustrated me to one degree because I, you know, they were the easiest videos to make right. the the market update videos, and I would spend all this time creating, you know, the the other content and and out filming and editing and um, and yet these videos were outperforming those videos. So I just thought to myself, I'm just gonna keep making that video once a month then um, and not worry about which video is, is getting more views than, than others. If this is you know, the content that my viewers are saying <laughs> they wanna watch, then once a month, I'm gonna give it to them. Uh, and hopefully they'll start watching all the other videos as well that, that I'm creating. Um, so yeah, you really have to kind of let go of what you think your audience is going to, or you know, like, or what is going to resonate with your audience, because you don't know. Um, I try to, I try to think about what, uh, what 
is it that I want to get across? What is it that I think my, my audience is looking for? Um, and I put that content together, but then, it, you know, it's, it, then it's up to them to, to decide for themselves what they are interested in and watching. The, the neighborhood video tours that I started doing um, took a while to get going, to get rolling. And to your point of it's, it's not the amount of views or the subscribers, those neighborhood video tours in the beginning when they first uh, when I was first getting going with them, the view count was was great compared compared to my other videos, but it wasn't as astounding as I thought they were going to be. And yet, the people reaching out to me from those videos was off the charts. So the engagement from those videos, um, you know, relative to the amount of views that they were getting was much higher than any of any of my other videos. Suddenly those market up, uh, sorry, the um, neighborhood video tours were the ones that were getting people to, to call me and email me much more often, uh, whether it was to list their house or to, you know, purchase a house because they're moving here to Vancouver. Mm. And I, I think, you know, for the people watching and listening at home, the, the thing that I sort of grabbed from that is, Let's say, for example, you, it's totally irrelevant, but let's go off on a bit of a tangent when it comes to YouTube, because imagine if you was making funny cat videos, for example, and that went ahead and got a million views, right? You can yeah. see that that attracts to everyone, but there's no outcome when it comes to that, okay? They might subscribe to your channel if they think that you're going to be creating funny cat videos versus where Craig has made such a niche video in terms of, I personally wouldn't be searching for a neighborhood tour of his area because I don't live there. Okay. But right. someone that li lives there or wants to move there is going to be searching for that stuff. So it yeah. makes sense that he's only going to have a, a smaller amount of views compared to a larger audience topic. But like what Craig is saying, those people are so targeted to the fact that there might be five people, but every single one of those five people might be interested in buying a house within that area. So I think that's that's brilliant. And Craig, what about when it comes to like systemizing your content? Like you said, you sort of found videos that work now. So what does your day to day look like as a real estate agent? Because I, you know, I can only imagine that it's still out of the norm for a lot of people let's say for example they're so used to making cold calls to get buyer and seller leads like how do you sort of tell them no stop doing that and start dedicating time to creating these videos what does your day-to-day -day look like when it comes to like your morning routine you know going through the day and how do you how do you switch off as well like because i'm guessing when you wasn't getting these leads it sort of started as like a hobby sort of thing and and now you are getting the leads through you've had to treat it like a business, right? Like my YouTube is a part of my business now. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It's a mindset shift. And, um, you know, my wife thought I was kind of crazy in the beginning, <laughs> um, posting, one, posting one video a week. Um, you know, it, it was like taking on an extra full-time job on top of my full-time job. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing. There are many ways to skin a cat. So uh, I never do my own listing videos. I always hire a videographer and the, you know, they come and they film it and they edit it. So that, that's one thing that's off my plate. Everything else I, I do myself and, and very shortly here, um, I'm gonna be getting them to, to do that as well so that I can offload more of that work um, and free up more of my time because uh, you know, the, the amount of leads coming in now and, you know, the, the busier I am at my job as a real estate agent, the less time I have to figure out what I'm going to shoot, go out and shoot it, edit it and, and, and get it posted. So um, I'm at a point now where I need to, you know, because I'm a one man show, I don't have a team or anything like that. So I, I'm at a point now where I need to start figuring out how, how I can start offloading a lot of that stuff. But it, it, it's a mindset shift in terms of what you think is going to get you business. So 
when I decided that I'm going to start this YouTube channel, um, and my channel name in the beginning wasn't Living in Vancouver, BC. Okay. It was just my name, you know, Craig Veroni, Personal Real Estate Corporation or whatever it was. Um, and I was watching some other really big YouTube uh, channels who were also real estate agents. And I saw that one, one of them changed their name to living in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's brilliant. Um, and I called them up and I said, you changed your name. Tell me why. Like, I have an idea why, but I want to hear why you guys have changed your name. And he said, because living in Portland, Oregon is a search, uh, uh, Google search term. So when people are searching for living in Portland, Oregon, now my entire YouTube channel name is a searchable term. Mm -hmm. So I immediately changed my channel name to living in Vancouver, BC. And that I think has also helped fuel the growth because, you know, not only do I do, I do keyword research in terms of the, the content and the titles that I, you know, and the, the stuff that I'm putting out there, but my channel name is, is a searchable uh, Google search term. Um, and I think that, that is really, really important. So what I'm building is this presence for anyone, whether they live here, whether they live in Metro Vancouver, or whether they are moving to the area. If they want to search life, you know, living in, in Vancouver or moving to Vancouver, or cost of living in Vancouver, which again, these are all videos that agents should be should be creating, cost of living, pros and cons, you know, living in Vancouver, all those kinds of things. Um, they're the best videos to, to film in your city. I'm creating a presence that nobody else is. So when people online are searching for those things, I'm the agent that pops up first, whether that's on Google or on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you will be, you would be astounded at the number of people who are on YouTube looking to move to another area. That's where they start their search. They go on Google, they go on YouTube because they want to find information about the area that they're moving to. Exactly. And if you can, if you're, you know, if you can provide that for them, they're going to give you a call. So I want to eventually be the dominant person online here in Vancouver. If it's anything to do with living in Vancouver or moving to Vancouver, I want to be the I want to be the number one guy. Um, and who who wouldn't want a business like that? You know, who wouldn't want that kind of business? And yes, the time invested of creating these videos, putting them together, and getting them online is valuable. It's my time. Sure. But the ROI insane it's it, it is insane it is it is really insane about what you can create and what you can attract at, from a business standpoint relatively cost free you know if you, if you want to do it all yourself it's relatively now your own time of course is money your you know your own time is money but you you are creating content you're creating a presence and you're giving people what they want and people are going to, people are going to call you because nobody else is out there doing it. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And I think, I think it's, it goes without saying, like you said, you are genuinely creating a machine. So what I always like to say when people talk about, talk about YouTube is especially with like real estate agents is the scalability of you cold calling people, for example, how could you scale you uh, cold call in a hundred people a day. Like the only way that you could possibly scale that is to bring on someone to cold call another hundred people and then another yeah. hundred people. Whereas YouTube, you're building this machine that sits and works for you 24 seven. And the fact that people get to know Craig. So when I, when I talk about cold calls, like you have to ring them and they don't have a clue who you are. Imagine if it's the other way around and they get to spend hours and hours and hours and hours with Craig and then they book in a call with him. It's 
completely flipping the the narrative right so they've already built so much trust and rapport with craig that like he said if he answers all of the questions that these guys are searching for why on earth would they go and search for another real estate agent to help them with the deal and i can't tell you how many times when people reach out to me via email um it's not your best the most already. the most well the most common line is uh, other other than i found you on youtube the most common line is i've been watch i've been binge watching your videos on youtube i've watched every neighborhood tour because we're thinking of moving to vancouver and we wanted to know about the various neighborhoods and you know i filmed at this at this point i filmed about 40 different neighborhoods around around metro vancouver nice. 40 40 different neighborhoods so for someone looking to move to this area to to be able to watch all of those videos and get a good sense of oh interesting so, so that's what this area is like and that's you know and immediately they're able to narrow down their search just by watching those videos so you know they are thrilled that i've created that content then they're thrilled when i actually connect with them and usually when I connect with, you know, any, any lead that comes in, I connect with them with a video email. So when they get a video email from me, a personalized, you know, then they're blown away because they, they feel like they're talking to a celebrity. They can't believe that, you know, they're actually hearing and seeing me and, 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 and speaking with me. Same thing if, uh, if they give me a call, you know, out of the blue, if they give me a call, they're, Quite often, I, I get the comment, I can't believe I'm talking to you, you know, because they feel like they know me. They've been watching me online so much that there's already a personal connection. There's already a, a relationship there. So to your point, if you want to sit at home or in an office cold calling um, or creating ads or bus benches or, you know, any of that mail outs, any of that kind of stuff, you're basically, uh, you know, throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, mm. right? Which is, it's not an effective way to, to market yourself. And YouTube offers you the ability and platform to market yourself in a way that's completely targeted to the people that you want to work with you. So every, every, every real estate agent that, that's on YouTube has their own personality. Everybody's different. I mean, every agent in every city is, is different. And, you know, as, uh, as Bomb Bomb likes to say, you're the differentiator. Mm -hmm. That's the differentiator is you. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there and let people see who you are, because that is what makes the difference in your business. Um, and I, I mean, I've never uh, cold called or, or anything like that, um, but you, you couldn't get me to, you know, go out and, and do door knocking or send out mail out flyers or anything like that. Um, ever because this form of marketing is far superior. I'm targeting those people who are interested in what I have to say. Um, and I don't care about anyone else. I'm not looking for the people who aren't looking to move here or aren't looking to sell a home in this area. The mm -hmm. only people I'm looking for are those looking to buy or sell in, in Vancouver or the greater Vancouver area. Um, and by watching my videos, when they reach out to me, I know that they're one of those people. So that connection is already there. And the, you know, you, you don't have to work at building that relationship. You start off at a point far ahead of, of anywhere else that you, then, you know, than you would if you were trying to cold call or door knock or send out a flyer or anything anything like that. So um, yeah, it's YouTube has really transformed my business and my life. Um, it is a ton of work, 
But to your, to your point there, you would have to do anything as a real estate agent. You would have to be doing something to generate business. Mm -hmm. So would I rather be cold calling and door knocking or would I rather be creating videos? No question, hands down, I'd rather be creating videos. Love it, man. I love it. And uh, be before we jump into this, because, you know, I really want to stick to the YouTube stuff with, with yourself. But yeah, out of the YouTube, out of the real estate game, what's one unique thing that you've done that you're sure that none of my previous guests have done? Out of, sorry. So, yeah, so, um, out of, you know, out of the YouTube, out of real estate, just in general, you know, because obviously it's all well and good having, having like the real estate thing, but you know, in terms of having fun, family life, what's, what's one thing you've done? You're sure none of the previous guests have done. Oh, that's uh, what I'm, what's something that I've done that none of your previous guests have done. Well, you know what? <laughs> I bet none of your guests have done this. A couple of months ago, you were asking about a morning routine, yes. right? So my morning routine is normally I get up uh, and work out. I get up, I work out, I come home, uh, get my son ready for school, and uh, and then I, you know, start my work day. Mm -hmm. A couple of months ago, um, my son is a boxer. He'll be turning fifteen in a, in a week. Here, uh, he's a boxer, and we we got to chatting one day, and and the topic of this fellow named Wim Hof came up. And uh, my son said, yeah, I've, I've been doing the cold shower thing, dad. Really? And, and I said, what? You, do you know who Wim Hof is? I don't, but I know the whole like cold shower thing. I never heard of him. No. So it's, there's a breathing technique and, and cold, you know, cold therapy and stuff. I, and I was astounded that my son yeah, knew they, this and was right. doing this on his own and, uh, I said, how did you find out about this? And he said, well, someone at the, at the, you know, on the team was telling me about it. So I thought I'd give it a try. And I said, well, you know what? I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to try it with you. So for the past uh, couple of months, two, two and a half months, um, I have had a cold shower every day. So you have your shower just like you normally would. And then once you're done, you turn it ice cold and you stand in that shower. So I do that every day for three minutes. Mm -hmm. And, um, but before that, uh, you know, when I get up in the morning, I get up at six, uh, I start getting ready. And then I do the breathing uh, exercise. I do that breathing technique um, where, where you do 30, uh, 30 to 40 inhalations and exhalations, and then you exhale completely and you hold your breath. And just last week, I cracked four minutes uh, on, on the breath holds. So the interesting thing about all of this, because I knew nothing about Wim Hof, I just started doing this to kind of support my son and, and do something with him, yeah. was I was blown away at the effect that it's had on me and my life and my business. Uh, I am way more focused uh, so much more uh, calm throughout the day. And, you know, any of the, the crazy things that come at me through the day, I feel like I can, I can handle them with ease. So um, that's a, that's an interesting thing. I think probably I nobody, nobody has done um, when I, yeah, when, when, uh, when my wife found out that I'm having cold showers every morning, she thought I was a bit nuts, but um, she, is the first to admit that it has had uh, a marked impact on on my overall well-being. So uh, that's that's part of my that's part of my morning routine now. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And um, yeah, for for the guys watching and listening as well, like one of the main things with the the, the cold showers as well is people always looking at it like, well, what does that? What difference does that make? The the main thing that they say about the cold showers is it's putting yourself through something that you don't want to do, right? And that, and that is it. it. And if Craig's waking up and he's putting himself through this thing that like, no one wants to have a cold shower, right? Like realistically, yeah. no one wants to do that because that's, you know, I do it too, but no one wants to do it. But when you get into that mindset of I'm doing this because I've told myself that I'm doing it. And then yeah. the same, you know, Craig has told himself that he's doing one video a week. If he didn't have, to, I know this is, you know, it's a potentially a knock-on effect, but 
if he didn't have his cold shower in the morning, maybe that video that he was supposed to script that day, maybe that just this wasn't as important because he's sort of like knocked off that cycle. So I think that's that's really, really important. Um, Craig, let, let's imagine that someone has, has landed on this video miraculously when typing in how to start a lead generating YouTube channel as a real estate agent. How would okay. you map out the next you know, month to two months for that person? On how to begin? Yeah, how, how would they sort of like, if you were just to push them straight into the deep end and, and say, you know, this is what you should be doing from month one to three? There are a number of people who offer courses. Sure. Um, Trevor Jones is one. Karen Carr, of course, you know, is, is the one who got me into to YouTube. And she has a fantastic course to get people um, started and, and going on on YouTube. And uh, I've heard nothing but good things about about her course. I don't know anything about anybody's courses because I've never really taken anyone's course. Uh, I was just someone who did all of the learning on my own. Um, perhaps it wasn't necessary, you know, maybe I could have sped things up if I'd, if I'd actually taken Karen's course, but I was getting so much information uh, from Karen before I actually started. And then during, she was such a, a great source of information, you know, when I would, would call her up. Uh, and it was a pretty quick study too. You know, I, I'd been in doing video for a couple of years. Um, I wasn't new to this. I wasn't new to the game. And uh, so I was able to kind of, although YouTube was a steep learning curve, I was able to absorb it and implement it pretty quickly. But if someone is starting out, maybe they've never done video before, right? So you're, you're com compounding things here because you're new to video, uh, you're new to YouTube, you're new to social media. There is a lot of stuff um, to take in. Uh, and it can be super, super overwhelming. So for those people, I would say maybe take one of the courses, you know, have a look at, at certain people out there take a look at Karen Carr or whatever. And because it's then it's a step by step process of leading you as a beginner through things. And I think that by doing that, not only will you learn the fundamentals and basics really well, but but you'll have then you'll have a, a solid foundation moving forward. Um, the biggest thing I can say is it's, it's a mental game. It's a mindset. And to your point about, you know, having a cold shower every day, it's just something I do, even though I don't really want to be doing it. I'm doing it because I, I know it's beneficial. I know it's, it's you know, if I'm consistent at it um, over the long term, it's going to have a positive impact. And that's, that's with anything in life. If you are consistent daily, there is going to be a change, mm. right? Um, you know, consistent effort incrementally daily has a compound effect, right? Um, and by doing that, you're going to see results. So if, you, if, if someone wants to make a decision of starting out, I would say commit to doing one video every two weeks or one video every month to start like figure out what's going to work for you but then stick with that right if if you think you can only get out one video every couple of weeks or one video a month just do that just start by doing that and maybe move it up to one video a week right if you can get to doing one video a week consistently then that's fantastic but consistency is key um sticking with it and make sure your content is great. Make sure the content that you're putting out, it's because it's not quantity. You know, I, I don't put out content for the sake of putting out content. Um, I, I want to make sure that it's quality stuff uh, that, that people are looking for. Sure, sure. And, um, you know, Craig, just to, just to wrap up this episode, thank you so much, by the way. It's, you know, dropped so much value for, for the people. My pleasure. Listening. Um, 
you mentioned your son. What does your son think about his dad being like a YouTuber now? Because I think <laughs> a couple of years ago, like the word YouTuber was, you know, pranks and so on and so forth. But obviously now there's such a there's such a big spectrum when it comes to the people on YouTube and their reasons for being on it, right? So yeah, yeah. What does that feel like? And, and especially what about the the benefits other than like the leads when it comes to you know i'm guessing you you making like any ad revenue from it as well uh i you know recent last year i my channel reached a point where it could be monetized um i don't even i don't even keep track of of what my channel makes Th that is irrelevant i mean it is so little money um you know and uh, it's not the reason that I started or got into to making a, a YouTube channel. Um, so yes, my channel is monetized. Yes, it, it makes a few dollars a month. I have no idea. It, um, it automatically gets deposited in, into, uh, into my account. And I can, you know, I can go and look and see what it, what it is each month, but I don't even bother. I don't even keep track because it's irrelevant to me. I don't, it's, it's not something that concerns me. I'm not worried about making that grow. I mean, if it, if it grows, it grows. Um, it's not the reason I'm on YouTube. Um, I'm not on YouTube to monetize my channel, to make money. I'm on YouTube to find buyers and sellers for my business. That's the reason I'm on YouTube. So the monetization of my channel is really irrelevant to me. Um, I don't even, I don't really consider myself a YouTuber. Sure. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just another platform that I'm on, you know, to, to help my, my business grow. But I can tell you from my son, because I've had him in videos, I've had him, you know, in my listing videos, I've had him in, uh, a lot of my other videos that I've created uh, and people love it when, when he's in there. Um, it's been fantastic for him to, to see that as well. And it's a great connection that we have. Um, you know, another good friend of mine, Brad McCallum out of Calgary, Alberta, he and his wife, Tila are uh, together in their videos all the time. And, you know, they quite often have their kid, you know, they have two gorgeous kids. The four of them are incredibly beautiful and photogenic. Um, and so why wouldn't you leverage that and use that in your videos? Sure. Um, you know, so yeah, if, if you can make things, the more personal you are in your videos, you know, the more you show of yourself and of your life you know, as you said earlier, you were asking me questions about, well, what do you do outside of real estate? Be because people want to know, people want to know what your story is, right? You know, when, when I found out about you and the fact that you had been in the fitness industry before, and, you know, you had done all of these other things prior to what you're doing now, that was really, really interesting to me because I'm, you know, I'm, I love fitness as, as well. I was never, I never was a personal trainer or anything, but I enjoy working out and I, and I like fitness. So immediately I felt like I had a connection with you, even though I didn't know you. And so I think that alone is so important because even like you're saying you, you've been using real estate as, uh, sorry, you've been using YouTube as a leverage for your buyer and seller leads with real estate. And the fact that you just said you had a connection with me because you watch some of like you've obviously consumed some of my content it just shows that no matter you know for the guys watching and listening because we, we have a lot of viewers in the real estate niche and you know in just general like online business niche but it just proves that it doesn't really matter what industry you're in yes real estate is one that is great but like I said before, pretty much any, this way, anyone I speak to, I'm like, get onto YouTube. Like, but no matter what service you deliver, because of that like, no trust, you know, Craig yeah. you said the reason that he's got onto my podcast and there's, there's so many opportunities and amazing people like Craig that I've had the, the amazing opportunity to connect and speak with simply because of the content that I've produced over that lifespan of me, of me creating content. Right. So yeah. It's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the more the more you can share of yourself online and, and in your videos, the more you will resonate with the kind of people that you want to work with. Right. And that's the important thing, right? I mean, you want to attract people who you want to work with, who like you and who you like. You know, nobody wants, you know, the, the other people that, that you don't like and you don't want to work with, that's that's great. You, you're, you don't need to attract those people. You're, you're trying to attract the people in the business uh, to you that, that have uh, a similar vibe to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really important. And then by, by sharing yourself and sharing your story uh, in your videos, that just helps reinforce that, that mm -hmm. message. 100%. And, and sorry, just, just to jump on the back of that is, if you if you reverse it into what we were talking about earlier with with say for example your your primary output is cold calling people let's say for example you cold call 10 or 100 people and one of them people say yes who's to know that you want to work with that person that's just agreed to work with you yeah so yeah man i think that's, that's so important and um yeah thank you so much greg for for jumping on it's been an absolute pleasure. Wish you all the best when it comes to the YouTube and obviously the uh, the real estate business outside of it. Um, I'm going to leave Craig's uh, YouTube link below. Definitely go check out some of his content. And uh, I'm sure we'll catch up again at some point. And Craig, obviously, this is the Design of Future podcast as well. So to wrap it up, I'd love to know a little bit about where is Craig in the, in the next 12 months? One thing I always like to say is, I'd love to set a date to get you back on in the years, in a year time, a years from now time, and um, sort of check off those goals together in a sense. Well, what's interesting last year, you know, the channel growth was rapid and exponential. You know, almost ten x in one year, okay. and but we were in the middle of a pandemic, so all of those people reaching out to me to move here. Uh, their plans were put on hold, even even before the pandemic. You know. I had many people planning on coming in sort of March and April and May who had to simply put their, their plans on hold because they were, they're moving from other parts of the world and uh, the global pandemic shut that down. So it's only now as we're moving, you know, toward the end of last year and now into this year that some of those people are, you know, finally coming here. Like I already have you know, several sets of clients who've sold their homes in, in the locations that they were living in and are here now quarantining, you know, we're getting ready to, to head out and, and find them a home. So this year, I think, is going to be really huge from, from YouTube business. So it'll be interesting in a year from now to measure the, that metric and put a, a sort of a number and a dollar figure to that. Like how much business has been generated this year, you know, from YouTube. So I'll check back with you in a year and, and give you that figure. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, thank you so much once again. Thank you guys for the for watching and listening at home. And I shall speak to you in the next episode. Take care. Thank guys. you so much for having me. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>